Okay, welcome back to our intro less podcast. Less, <laughs> unless you want to do that little dance that you just did. did, did we need something. So <laughs> it bothers me. <laughs> We're not even working on it. Let's be honest. I know, but I think about it every time we record. Well, ah. here we are. Okay. So um, we get a lot of stuff this week about people not knowing how to read labels, food labels. And um, so we wanted to go into a little bit of detail today. Um, I've got some pictures of labels that I took at Sam or at uh, Costco yesterday that we're going to go over. Um, really, this day and age, you need to be able to read a label, uh, and you need to be reading labels. So it's. Uh, I think that's the key, right? Like, people want to get well, they want to get healthy, they want to make better choices. You cannot do that if you don't understand what you're looking for. Or how to read a food label. Yeah, so this actually it comes from one of our people. They sent us a um, a picture of a tortilla that was supposed to be a no carb, no net carb tor- tortilla, and I'm just shaking my head, going, uh, no. <laughs> so um, first off, remember there's a couple rules. If your food has a label, it's not really food. Um, I have. The I, I just think of the the meat section being the exception to that rule, like the butcher section. Right. Um, but that's that's a generalization, and generalizations are usually only seventy five percent of the time right. So, um, but just reading a label, just remember if there are words in that label. Now I'm talking about the ingredient label. We don't give two rips about the nutrition information that talks about like the nutrition fat, fat. calories, protein. Right. Uh, well, we, we look at protein more than probably most people do. And I look at sugar. And we look at sugar and added sugars, et cetera. So yeah, you do want to look at that, but we're talking about the actual ingredient list, what's in the food. So when you go to that list, Read the list, and if there are foods in there you cannot pronounce, probably shouldn't. You shouldn't be eating it. And we live in a day of Google, and a hundred apps. So, if you aren't sure what an ingredient is, you could Google it, or you can use like Environmental Working Group to put in that ingredient, or you can. Or just our favorite yucca. Right, Um, and then see it will at least tell you what that ingredient is why it's in your food like is it a preservative is it an emulsifier is it a flavoring agent and then it'll put risks with it right so we have here a cheat sheet of uh sneaky ingredients you should avoid uh we'll figure out some way to make this available to people if they ask yeah they got a message up um so first off foods avoid sugar um, but a lot of times in these labeling, in the labeling, it's not just going to blatantly say sugar. Right. Like so it rarely says. The list we have in front of us is agave nectar, brown rice syrup, organic cane sugar, uh, erythrol, maltol, dextrose, fructose, fruit juice concentrate, one of my favorite, uh, barley malt, cane juice, uh, um, evaporated cane juice, beet sugar, and carob syrup. Uh, I, I just, when I read through that list, I think of one of the classes that I took years ago talking about organic cane sugar. It's like, oh, I, I ate organic cane sugar. Well, congratulations. You still got organic dialysis because <laughs> it'll still cause organic diabetes. Uh, but these are just sneaky ways that people put sugar in there and make you think that it's good for you. Well, and oftentimes you'll, you'll have multiple of these. Like, so you look at it like a protein bar, for example, comes to mind where it'll say like brown rice syrup in one spot. Later on, it might say apple juice concentrate in another place. So are there better forms of sugar than others? Sure. And you can do your own research to figure that out. But I think people read the label, they don't see sugar and they think it's okay. <clears throat> that My favorite is liquid IV. Like liquid IV comes to my mind all the time because it's listed as dextrose. Is like the, I think it's like the first or second ingredient in liquid IV, and it's like, wow, your electrolyte doesn't need sugar, um, but people don't see sugar, right? And if they don't know, then right. whatever. So, liquid IV Gatorade's good at that one, right? They put it in. I think they actually put it in there with glucose, if I remember correctly, right? So, all right, so I don't want to delineate out every single one, okay. is, but oils. I think the easiest thing to do with the oils is to put the oils to use and then avoid all of them. Yeah, avoid everything else. So, literally, coconut oil, 
extra virgin. extra virgin olive oil and avocado oil are the only three. These are important, so I'm going to read them anyway. Hey, everything else you need to avoid, including canola oil, vegetable oil, soybean oil, palm oil, cottonseed oil, grapeseed oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, sesame oil, and peanut oil. None of those are good for you. All of those will cause inflammation. All of those are underlying causes to things like heart disease and um, and, and neurodegenerative disorders, obesity. just obesity. Just stop consuming them. Kimber, what was that I looked at yesterday? I was like, oh my gosh, that's all it is. Well, you have to be careful too. No, it was, we looked at those protein drinks. Our teenager wanted this protein drink that was like a pre-made protein drink because it boosts 40 grams of protein, which is a lot, right? He works out all the time, wanted like a quick protein. Yeah, there's literally canola oil in it. Like, so here are all these people working out, getting great exercise, think they're getting a protein shake. <clears throat> And these oils cause, I mean, go do some research. You know, what do industrialized seed oils do inside my body? Right. And you can find out. But um, Added flavors. I think we should talk about these ones. Um, just mention them because people have no idea that monosodium glutamate or MSG is actually horrific for you. And it's one of those pe things that people slip in there because it's an addict. It makes you actually addicted to the food. And it makes it um, really good. Hashtag Chick-fil-A. Uh, there are any all of their chicken is actually loaded with MSG, um, and it is absolutely no bueno. Um, so the line is so long. <laughs> that's it. It's exactly why the line is so long. It's a bunch of crackheads. That's it. Crack. Uh, natural flavors: MSG, high fructose corn syrup, aspartame, sucralose, saccharin. Um, I can't even pronounce it. Acylfolate, potassium. Artificial flavors and yeast extracts. Oh. Just watch out for those. They're hiding something in there or they've added it in there so you get addicted to the stuff and you keep buying it. That's the thing. Most of the added flavors, it's it's to give you that dopamine hit when you eat it. Yep. And so I think that's one of the things I find when people are switching to a whole foods diet is they they miss that initially. Because as much as I love, you know, fresh veggies and chicken, like it doesn't have the hit of something that has all of these things and over time it does right. once you like body detoxes from that but initially i mean it's added for a reason it's flavoring i i listened to a podcast that said and it's in a book too they actually some companies actually have people hooked up with like electrodes to their brain so they can patent you know their ingredients right to get at a certain like brain response like wow Maybe if you just even know that, you're like, yeah, I'm staying away. Like, why do people love Doritos? Why can kids not stop eating Doritos? Hello? Look at the list it's of it's added so flavors on yeah. there. Like, <laughs> I laugh as you say that because, you know, Mitchell got me hooked on that show Narcos, which is like the Pablo Escobar story and how they got cocaine like into the system. What food companies are doing is absolutely no different. Yeah. There's no difference in the two. My opinion. <laughs> so... Disclaimer. <laughs> um, added colors. Just don't consume food dyes, please. And But you have to be careful because food dyes and things you wouldn't think it's in. It, read your labels because you'll start saying, like, what in the world does this have a food dye? Like, up my kids' grandparents sent them, like, this chocolate for a holiday. And I looked at the label and it literally had, like, red, red dye 40 in it or something. And I was like, but this is like a chocolate caramel. It's like a turtle thing. But I read, so I did some research just to figure out why. It's because it makes chocolates, if they're not like true, like cacao, mm -hmm. when it's made into food, it doesn't have like the deep, dark brown color. But if you add red food dye, it gives it that. So often things that aren't, I mean, obviously if you look at a gummy bear or a Skittle, like, you know, like, oh, these clearly have food dye in them. But it's even in foods that don't have red mm. or green like it's all in there right. i thought that was really interesting so uh emulsifiers let's not get too deep into that one um let's do mention soy lecithin zact of gum and carrageenan there are a lot of things so many again pre-packaged protein drinks because it's a thickener it's thickener so just avoid that stuff like the plague and then preservatives um they put the food in there to give it a law or they put this in there to give it a long oh, shelf, life. shelf life so the question is is what is that doing to you? Right. So if it can stay on the shelf for a few years, 
your body's not. <laughs> no. you so eat it. just read. I'll read these just so you have an example. Sodium nitrite, sodium benzoate, potassium bromate, BHA, BHT, propyl gallate, gallate and sulfites. Every single one of those linked to some form of cancer or another. Uh, just avoid Indeed. preservatives like anything else. So, all right. So let's put this into some real world, like shopping perspective. So this first one is um, miss- missing. Hang on here. And so, you know, you're, the first time you start paying attention when you go to the grocery, it's going to take you a little longer. Right. Um, I remember like before I started my wellness journey, I didn't, I genuinely didn't read labels. I just picked up what people like to eat. Right. They pick, you pick up the end caps, you know, they put those end caps on it. So you literally trip over them and you're like, oh, what's this? So this is a perfect example. So um, smoked beef brisket, burnt ends. Who doesn't love the burnt ends of a brief, beef brisket, right? Me. Um, I do. <laughs> I may have asked for one last time I was at the barbecue place. Uh, but this is a different story because this is something that is put on the shelf and it's supposed to stay there. And you, people in our program might think, well, they need to get their four to six ounces of protein. Here's a great way to do it because this stuff has 27 grams of protein per serving, which is really high. Uh, but let's look into what's actually in here. So if we zoom in on the label, oops, I'll get there. Uh, so first, first ingredient, well, first off, you look at that and go, the list is kind of long. That's a long list. My, For sp- beef. my spidey, you know, my spidey senses are already tingling. Uh, so the ingredients are beef, water, cool, cornstarch. Why are we putting cornstarch in there? Salt and then soybean oil, dextrose, sugar. See, it has so, dextrose like, and sugar. Right. See how it's like, so are- doubling up the sugar. Then you got sodium bicarbonate. Rice, starch, spices, okay, cure, salt, sodium, all the, there's sodium nitrate, beet, beet powder, yeast extract. There's just- Half of these are already on our Oh, list. look at that. There's another sugar because of the, the barbecue sauce. Uh, they actually put paprika in there for color, not a food dye, which is- That's a plus. That's a plus. But there's too many negatives in this particular one that I would not, yeah. I wouldn't buy this. I certainly wouldn't consume this on the daily or at all. Uh, just because some of the ingredients in there. So again, we kind of skipped past the nutrition facts, came down to the ingredients and start applying those rules. There's more than three ingredients. There's stuff in here that I can't pronounce. That is a long list of ingredients. So this one we're going to put it back. Okay. This next one, uh, again, this is something that people in our program might uh, gravitate towards because chicken is super high. And protein, it's the densest, like one of the densest, like protein sources that you can get. So you might look at this and say, "Hey, these are fully cooked chicken breast bites. Uh, they're low in fat and they're high in protein, and they're Canadian. They must be good for us, right?" So, zooming in, the ingredients: chicken breast, water, dehydrated chicken broth, vinegar. So the first five are good. Then we're in potato starch. Why are we putting potato starch in chicken to preserve it? And then canola oil. So just because of that canola oil, that's why I kicked it out. Right. I should have taken a picture of the replacement because Costco has those chicken skewers. That which, don't have. Which are much, much better. Right. Uh, and my guess is that something like this, it's probably, this is how they cooked it. Like they cooked it in canola right. oil. And then they put natural flavor in there. So what are they hiding in that label, natural flavor? Because there's tons of stuff that Can be if used. you list it as natural flavor, you're just fine. This next one. Is Green Ridge these these beef snack sticks? And I actually should have bought these. Hmm. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Hey, beef, water, and then two percent of sea salt, celery powder, vinegar, garlic, natural flavors, and it's in a natural sheep casing. Sheep. I don't know why sheep, but <laughs> the only one on here is not that makes me raise my eyebrow is natural flavors. Everything else, there's no oils, there's no um, preservatives. It's just Pretty straightforward. And look at that. Use it within five days. So I thought that one actually looked pretty good. This one we know is good uh, because Kevin's is one of the brands that we trust. Um, they have a lot of use clean different proteins that you, they use clean ingredients. So right on the front of this label, this guy breaks the rules because remember I said 
when a product makes a health claim, they're probably lying. Uh, right on the front here, this is grass-fed beef, uh, soy-free sauce. Well, I guess that's not really a health claim. That's just saying. That's just saying what's in it. Yeah. It's not saying we'll lower heart, you know. And look at the bottom here, a certified paleo down there at the bottom. You're probably dealing with something here that's actually pretty good. But looking at the ingredients, we only have um, grass-fed beef in broth. Tells how he cooks it. Uh, sous vide. Yeah, that's, how do you even pronounce that? I don't know. Sous vide. It's a cooking process, not an ingredient, just to be clear. Uh, beef, water, vinegar, yeast extract, sea salt, cultured onion, celery powder, black powder, powder, citrus extract. Everything in there is real food. And the barbecue sauce, he uses coconut sugar. There's a little bit of sesame oil in there. Uh, but that's just in the sauce. That's not like one of the major ingredients. So I would put this one as pretty dang clean. Yeah, pretty <laughs> good. Not as good as if you made it yourself. Right, right. But I think that's the key, right? Like you're going to have that green, yellow, red if you're not making your food yourself. Right. And so. You won't get green until you make it yourself. Right. So in the realm of packaged food. Right. But we have these in our freezer they, at home right now. They come in in time crunch. No. Oh. Okay, oops, I went ahead. This is something we buy on occasion, or buy actually quite often. This is organic chunky guacamole. Uh, you look at other guacamole products, there's tons of preservatives, there's tons of dairy in them. Uh, but looking at this one, oils. this one, yeah, oil is a bad one. This one is just organic avocados, organic tomatoes, organic tomato juice, sea salt, onions, red onions, lime juice, cilantro, garlic, sea salt, pe and peppers. Pretty sure our nine-year-old could pronounce Every single one of those. That, okay. that is so, tasty. Yeah, we buy those quite often. It's hard to keep avocado, like you're playing such a gamble when you buy fresh avocados. It's my favorite way to eat avocado, but it's like hard to buy without going to the store every day or keeping it right. So this is a great way to eat daily avocado without throwing half of them away because you waited too long and then they were rotten or they were too hard and you couldn't scoop them out. So Okay, so here's a great one. Hey, what about lunch meat? Not really a fan of lunch meat. I mean, in general, it's a processed food, right? If I'm saying eat protein, whole foods, I'm not thinking processed. So food. here's here's what I tell people: Can you lose weight by using um, lunch meat as your protein? Yes. Yes. Is it the healthiest thing? Is it good for long term health? No. No. Okay, so if you're in a quick fix or a quick bind, bind, you could do lunch meat. But let's show you why. This is just now. This is just off the shelf lunch meat, Kirkland brand. So it's Costco. Look at the ingredients: corn sugar, okay, um, dextrose, sugar, carrageenan, dextrose, yeast extract, sodium phosphate. There's all sorts of just yeah. That's just junk in here. And all like kind of the addictive stuff, right? My favorite, <laughs> you do love me. not because they taste good, but because of the bull crap that they... But they do kind of taste good. Uh, no, they, they do taste good. I mean, I used but... to feed these to my kids when we first went gluten-free because they're gluten-free and they tasted good. <laughs> so we, we thought these were... I mean, I didn't buy into the like lowers your cholesterol, but I did was like, it's gluten-free. Oh, for those listening, it's Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah, honey cheers. It, it's gluten-free. It and... helps lower your cholesterol. It has 12 vitamins and minerals. <laughs> a sweetened whole grain oat cereal with real honey and natural almond flavor. Yeah, that's why I thought, I thought I was really doing my kids. I mean, I wasn't buying them well, tricks. They, they support a children's hospital, so they must be good, right? Okay, so let's look at the ingredients. Whole grain oats. But not organic. But not organic, which means... Glyphosate. Loaded with glyphosate. This is a bowl of glyphosate with milk in it. Right. I, um, sugar, second ingredient, cornstarch, honey, brown sugar syrup, third, fourth ingredient, uh, tripotassium phosphate. What is that? Check it out. Canola and or sunflower oil, natural almond flavor oil, and then to make you feel good about yourself and to pat yourself on the back. They put vitamin E. They, add, they put some vitamins in here. And then it's funny because, um, it's funny because I did not mute my computer. Look at the bottom. Contains bioengineered food, food ingredients because no one knows how to make food better than God, better than 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 man. 
<laughs> so we buy all engineer food ingredients. Oh, but it's gluten free. Right. See, and that's what I'm saying. So I think you get people that are like, okay, because, you know, a lot of people these days do need to eat gluten free because mm-hmm. there's leaky gut everywhere and gluten exacerbates leaky gut. So I think people see that and they're like, oh, I can feed that to my kids. It's it's gluten free. Right. But the oats are going to make that leaky gut even worse. Yeah. And so it's like, you've got to like, you've got to go a little step further. Okay. I think this is the last one and then we'll wrap it up because we've been yakking for a while. This is a good one. Keto white bread. See, it's the other advertising. So you, it grabs your eye because it's keto. So it must be low in sugar. So it must be good for you. Hey, ingredients. Bread base is modified wheat starch, wheat gluten. So they actually have to add gluten into it. Inulin, which is uh, another sugar. <laughs> Chicory, vegetable fiber, oat fiber, wheat, protein, isolate, water, soybean oil. I'm not even going to keep going because it just goes downhill from there. So it might be low, and, and genuinely, how can they really say it's low in sugar when it has two ingredients? Two ingredients that are sugar, even though they're not called sugar. Yeah. So I need to. I looked this up one time and read about it. That how they have to claim sugar grams if it's not coming from, depending on the source of sugar, and I can't remember what I read, but it was interesting. I'm laughing because I didn't catch this yesterday. And we all know California is the source of um, reliable political information. Okay. But there's actually a warning on here. Required California Proposition 65 statement for products being sold in California. Consuming this product can expose you to chemicals, including acrylamide, which are known to the state of California to cause cancer and birth (laughs) birth effects or reproductive harm. So at least this one has a warning. I don't know how they don't with the with the, with the with the honey nut Cheerios either, but well, I wonder what why some have to well, put that warning because that's the thing I think. Like, I'm not here to tell someone like you have to eat this way or this. I just feel like it's the education that's missing. So I think this is what should be on everything. Right. Like, fine if companies want to make it, and you have people that genuinely, there's plenty of people I know that they don't care. Like, they feel right. well enough, and they're going to keep eating it. But maybe they wouldn't if they knew. So I just feel like labels should be on it. Like, this has been known to cause cancer or this has been known to cause heart disease. And then people can, like, at your own discretion, shop at your own discretion. But I feel like that's not really how it's done. It's, like, hidden. And that's the part that frustrates me. Well, that's that could, we could open a whole new can of worms about that. Um, and maybe we should one of these days. But what it comes down to, in my opinion, is... Drug companies hate um, competition. And we know that the FDA is controlled by drug company money. The research articles are owned by, or the research is done by drug companies and their money. They own the research. They manipulate the data. They've been doing it for years. And Big so Food it, is up there. And here. Big Food is up there just helping them because if they sell more Honey Nut Cheerios, cholesterol is going to be higher so they can sell more you know, cholesterol and blood pressure medications. And we can go down this whole big, right, it's a big pathway, but the end result is... Poor hell. Like, our country is so sick. And I think we didn't even say, like, you could take... I would like to see what Honey Nut Cheerios look like in Europe. Yeah. I haven't seen it for Honey Nut Cheerios, but I've seen it for, like, I think it's Tricks or Lucky Charms. I don't know. Some of those. Like, we put ingredients. Same food company, but how they what they have to put in food in the United States differs from Europe's laws because Europe has tighter requirements for what they allow in food, but we don't here. <laughs> yep, and it's uh, the the you know the great American tragedy tragedy keep us sick, keep us out of control. So it's horrible. Yep. Anyway, so venture out to the grocery store. Get the Yucca app. Start scanning foods and and apply we'll apply some of the rules. Right. So let's just review those before we wrap up. Number one. If the ingredient list have foods that you can't pronounce, don't eat it. Number two, if it's more, if it's a paragraph long, it should really cause your concern. And number three, what was number three? I can't remember. Well, I just think it's like those ingredients to avoid. I mean, I don't, right. Oh yeah, yeah, avoid those. Like we're gonna look at sugars and added flavors and preservatives and those sneaky ingredients right. you want to stay away from. And sugar probably being up there at the very top because sugar is the fundamental like, I don't even know what how to call it, but like the leading cause of yep. pretty much everything. 
other things I would avoid too, but that one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us again. Happy grocery shopping. Well, <laughs> thanks for listening to the podcast. My mother doesn't even know exists. Um, special thanks to Grand Peaks Media for putting this together for us. Mitchell's a stud. Do, do, do. And we will see. That's our music. Yes. Kim is now the provider of our music. Okay. See you guys next time.